Hey everybody, it's me, and today there's something that I wanted to talk about because I had a good talk with my friend Victor, as y'all know, his voice legend. We had a little um, discussion about this uh, series, and he actually mentioned this in his live stream, which is archived on his channel. I'll link it below. It's pretty interesting and very insightful, but aside from that, um, yes, as you can see in the title, Today I'm going to be talking about Crash Bandicoot's future, and this isn't the first time I've done it, but this is like, this is something, this is not something that's just going to be like, overall my opinion, this is something that's going to have to be taken into account for, for the future, because just based on observation alone, everything, I'm about, everything that I'm about to say is most likely 90 or 100% true. So, Crash Bandicoot's future, as you all know it, at this point, it's looking bright because of how successful the remaster was with the Insane Trilogy on PS4, as well as it coming to multiple platforms in July, I mean, not July, not July, on June 29th, and yeah, so that's cool and all, but um, we don't know what's next after that, and what uh, this is a key note that I just want to mention, with the whole trilogy thing coming to ps4 that wasn't because of activision that was because of sean Layden. sean Layden was the one that approached activision and made it happen and thankfully the people that developed it were people that already had history with the series and were fans of the series similar to sonic mania how that game was made by fans for the fans but i'm gonna get to sonic a bit later because there's a little comparison that i want to drive home that a lot of people need to understand so let's start off with the bad. I want to get the bad out the way because that's where everything just kind of falls flat. And I want to get that out the way. So with the whole demise, with Crash's future coming to a demise, I, I took some notes here as you saw earlier. But with the demise part, now as you guys know, a lot of people have been a lot of people have been requesting remasters for CTR, Crash Bash, and Twin Sanity. And, uh, you know, there's that little percentage that wants CNK for some reason and Wrath of Cortex. But th besides the point, that's besides the point. People want more remasters. And I can see why they want more, but what they have to realize is that this is Activision we're talking about. By no means do I hate anyone at Activision, but they have proven to us that they are perfectly fine with pushing out shovelware type games. Now... I only remember this term, shovelware, because of my good friend Fred, as y'all know, five, uh, Fred5107. He's uh, talked about Plankton's Robotic Revenge or Hero Pants, one of the two, or both. But the reason why those two games are great examples, along with Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5, or, you know, the most recent Tony Hawk game that wasn't really received that well because of how buggy and messed up it was, um... That's where things start to get a little shaky because the same thing can happen with Crash Bandicoot. Uh, we could get a CTR remaster, but we probably won't have like new models. It'll just probably be using the same models from Insane Trilogy, but in cars. And another thing that's going to happen with the whole CTR remaster thing, and I only use this as an example because that's the most requested. But anyways, the reason why... The CTR thing is scary is because one, we kind of already have a Crash Team Racing like sequel, remake, kind of reskin thing. And that's Crash Nitro Kart, made by the same people that put out the trilogy. For those that don't know, Vicarious Visions made Crash Nitro Kart back in 2003, I believe, along with the Game Boy Advance games. Physics are not going to be the same as the original CTR, so people are going to complain about that. Just like how people were complaining about the Insane Trilogy with the depth perception. You know how Crash and Coco felt when you jump and move and all that in comparison to the PS1 versions of the games. You know, it's, history is pretty much going to repeat itself and it's not going to look too good. And that's what a lot of these Crash fans suffer from and it's repetition. So when we do get CTR remastered, people are going to eat it up and people are going to want more. But as time goes on... They'll start to realize until it's too late, most likely, that things are starting to get, like, stale and the series isn't really going anywhere by bringing stuff, by digging shit up from the past, pretty much. 
So what I'm trying to get at with the demise thing is that people will eat up the remaster, but still complain about it because it's not like the the early version of the game, the PS1 version of the game. And it's probably going to be a lazy product is what I'm getting at. So take that as you will. I'm not here to force my opinion or anything on you. It's just that that's what's going to happen because I've said in the past that the Insane Trilogy was not going to be the same as the PS1 Trilogy and people complained and I told them that it wasn't going to be the same. It wasn't going to play the same. There were going to be different rules applied because the game feels different. So yeah, let's move on to the good now, the miracle. So we get a new game, right? Sequel, reboot, whatever. We get it and it's functional it gets things done it's everything's just done correctly the problem with this however is that you see a lot of people in this a lot of people complain that not complain but a lot of people are stuck on crash going down a narrow corridor hallway type gameplay like crash one all the way up to wrath of cortex here's the thing that's not bad you shouldn't like strip that away from crash bandicoot but there should be more to do than just do the same thing over and over again. You can't have a series grow by doing the same thing over and over again, but with but it looks different. It's still the same thing. It it doesn't it 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 doesn't benefit the series at all. My good friend Victor also brought up a good analogy on how, you know, at some point in life you're going to get tired of kicking a rock. So, what if you want to push a boulder? So, you do something new, and that's exactly what the Crash series honestly needs. Um, with the Insane Trilogy, yeah, it was good. It was good to get back to the past, and, you know, it looks nice and everything, but, you know, we do we do need something refreshing. We do need something new. And I get that people care about the series. They want it to succeed and stuff, but you can't have it succeed. You can't have it always succeed. I mean by doing the same thing over and over again because what you don't realize is that while you're passionate about everything and complaining about the differences between this game and that game is that you don't even see that the series has already been stagnated enough so it's ultimately just gonna hurt the series one way or the other if it's a miracle and we get a new game and it's different people are gonna complain and if we do get a remaster People are going to complain because it's not the same as the PS1 version of set or PS2 version of said remaster. And then people will start to see like the crevices and cracks and holes between the newer version of the game and the old version because it's published by a company that has put out shovelware type products such as the two Spongebob games I mentioned earlier and the Tony Hawk game. Now, here's where I see the miracle kind of triumphing over the, the whole demise thing. And it's mainly because, again, we have a company, Vicarious Visions, for example, that have had history, that, that's had history with the Crash Bandicoot series. They made games before, so it's not all too bad. We don't have Behavior Interactive making a Crash game. It's not ass, thankfully. And plus... While people don't like the whole Skylanders Imaginators thing with Crash in it, whatever, that doesn't matter. It's still new. It's different. That right there, that whole Skylanders Imaginators thing was is honestly, if you really think about it, it's honestly a slice of hope that we can get something original because that was hella original and that was very fun. And they made combat, the same combat that Titans and Modern Vermeer had, they made it work in a setting that people were familiar with Crash Bandicoot with. Skylanders Imaginators Thumping Wumping Island Action Pack or whatever it's called, with Crash in it pretty much, the whole Crash Pack, that was an example of how Crash can still have combat while remaining true to, you know, what he does in the originals and stuff, while still keeping things fresh and not old or repetitive. So... There's one more thing I gotta add, and I said I was gonna get to this, and this might sound harsh, alright, this might sound harsh. A lot of people like to say that certain fan bases are trasher, or trashier rather, than the others. I'm using Sonic as an example, 
because it just makes the most sense. So, in a Sonic fan base, yes, you have that toxic group, you have that toxic toxic side, but you only really care about it when you focus on it. Let's look at the good of the well-established, well-already-established Sonic franchise. You have a lot of games, you have a lot of merchandise, that's, wait, wait, that's, yeah, that's two things. A lot of games, a lot of merchandise, fuck ton of fans, right? But if when you look, when you look into the whole fan thing, there are comics that are made by fans, there are fan games, 2D and 3D modern Sonic, blah, blah, blah. classic Sonic <laughs> and modern Sonic games made by fans, there's art, there's music, there's a bunch of stuff, fan films, there's a lot. And plus, we got Sonic Mania, which was a game made by fans for fans. What is the Crash Bandicoot fan base or community doing? Exactly. All they're doing is complaining because the character is branching out, expanding his horizons on doing more things when they don't like it because they say that it's not, it's like, it just doesn't fit Crash for some reason. Even though Mario can have games like Odyssey, and Sonic can have games like, what, Generations and Adventure 2, and Unleashed. While people don't, and, and, and Unleashed is another great example. While people don't like Sonic Unleashed, it was still different. And it wasn't entirely, like, critically panned, panned or anything. But it, it was, it, some people, a lot of people didn't like it. A lot of people did like it. But overall, what I think that game achieves and what the Sonic franchise achieves, in my opinion, is that it's extremely versatile. Like, it's not the same thing over and over again. And that's what I feel like needs to be done with Crash Bandicoot. It needs some, we need new shit. We, we can't keep doing this remastered bullshit. We can't keep doing the whole Naughty Dog thing. Jason Rubin said at, at the E3 Coliseum last year that he doesn't even know how Crash Bandicoot would do outside of nostalgia. But you want to know why? It's because that's all people view Crash as, a nostalgic-ass character. And that's not entirely bad, but what's risky with nostalgia is that that's all you see. You just see a straight, linear, hallway-type game, like gameplay style. That's it. You don't see nothing more. If fans continue to refute creativity and uniqueness like Radical Entertainment brought to us with Tag Team Racing, Crash of the Titans, and Crash Mind Over Mutant, and, you know, before it got canceled, Crash 2010 or Crash Landed. If fans continue to be the way they are, we're not going to see Crash grow at all. And that's what's ultimately going to kill the series. And if you want remasters... That's still going to kill the series. Because all you're doing is just digging shit up from the past. And I think I've said enough. Uh, I don't think this video was as concise as I thought it would be. But I did hope... You know, I do hope that some of y'all get what I'm, what I'm saying. Not even what I'm trying to say. What I am saying. So, that's going to be it for this video. You know, I was going to add more to this, but... I'm, I, I just, I want to casually talk about it as if I'm talking to somebody on Discord or face-to-face -face having a friendly discussion about this. Because truth be told, Crash could die now where he could continue to grow. And the Insane Trilogy could just be it. And we don't even know if it is. However, there is something else I almost forgot to mention. So, a while back, before the Spyro Reignited Trilogy was confirmed, a lot of people speculated that the next project that Dan Tangue, the director for the Insane Trilogy, was making was the Spyro remake. But now we know that it's Toys for Bob's making the Spyro remake, and Vicarious Visions are working on something else. There are two things that that could be. It could either be a remaster, which I hope not, personally, or a new game for Crash Bandicoot. Or... I said two, but there's three things. Or a new Skylanders. So we got a new Skylanders by Vicarious Visions, a new Crash game, a new experience for Crash Bandicoot, or a remaster. And I'm hoping, I am hoping it's a new Crash game. Honestly. That's all I wanted to say. This was just a, I just wanted to talk to y'all like, 
on the rail about this because I don't want to see this series like go down like that. Seriously, it already declined enough with Wrath of Cortex and Twin Sanity with how those games turned out. Despite how you feel about them, I'm talking objectively. You know, not from the heart or none of that. You know, we don't need to see, see the series decline again, especially with how successful it's become again, like it has in the 90s. So yeah, this video's going on for too long. We're 16 minutes in. I'm going to end this, and I'll see you guys in the next one whenever, if ever. Peace.